back, cellists. In today's lesson, we're going to learn all about our left hand and learn how to use it on the neck of our instrument and learn a few more notes on both the D string and the A string. Before viewing this video, make sure that you've watched video two where we learned pizzicato technique of the open strings. In the string instrument world, we number our fingers on our left hand. Finger number one, number two, number three, and number four. So our first finger, our index finger, is going to line up with our first tape on our instrument. Our second finger, we're gonna skip that for a second and skip all the way to the third finger, our, is gonna line up with our second tape. And our fourth finger is gonna line up with our third tape. That second finger is gonna sit exactly in between the first tape and the second tape. So between the first finger and the third finger. The notes we're gonna learn today don't require the use of the second finger, but when we're putting our fingers on the instrument, lay it down with the third finger. It'll help and give you a little bit more strength. Let's do a little practice with our finger numbers. I'm gonna do four finger numbers and then I want you to repeat it back to me. Here's the first one. One, one, four, four. One, one, four, four. Nice job. Here's another one. One, three, four, four. One, three, four, four. All right, ready for a challenge? One, three, one, four. One, three, one, four. Nice job, ultimate challenge. Four, one, three, one. Four, one, three, one. Nice job. So now that we know our finger numbers on our left hand, let's go ahead and put them on the neck of the cello. So first, line up your first finger with the first tape. Second, I want you to line up your third finger on the second tape. And remember, get that second finger right in between the first and the third finger. And then our fourth finger is gonna fall right on the third tape. To make this as easy as possible, let's check behind the neck of our cello. And let's make sure that our thumb is exactly right in between the first and the third finger. So opposite our second finger. What this helps us do is get the biggest stretch between our fingers, one and four, and it helps the placement. So again, first finger on the first tape, third finger on the second tape, and fourth finger on the third tape with that second finger lying right in between, and our thumb exactly opposite the second finger in between the first tape and the second tape. So let's learn to pizzicato our fingered pitches. So let's start again with that open, D strings. Making an L with our right hand, let's pizzicato the open D string. Ready? And... Wonderful sound. There we go. So let's get our first finger on the first tape. Now when we push down on the string, don't think about squeezing. What I want you to do is think about holding. Remember the cello was braced against you at the button, against your body, and then on the floor is your other point of contact and then your knee so it doesn't go left and right. But that button is going to be sort of a back brace. So when you pull towards yourself like this, push your finger down, your cello won't go any. Pulling into the fingerboard and having our first finger on the first tape. Make sure your thumb is behind where the second finger would fall in between the first and second tapes. Okay, with our finger pressed on the string, make your pizzicato L and pluck the D string now while pressing. That's a new note. There's our first finger note on the D string. Make sure that you keep the, the note pressed as the note rings. If you pick up your finger after you pizzicato, it'll change the note. So leave your finger down the entire time. Let's move on to the third finger. Let's put our first finger on that first tape, second finger in between, and third finger on the second tape, making sure that our thumb is still behind that second finger. Pluck the D string. There it is, there's our second note on our D string. We got one more. Let's add our pinky, our fourth finger, and we're gonna put it on the third tape. Notice all of my fingers are down, and my thumb has remained behind the neck in between the first and the second finger. Let's pluck that note. Notice that as I add fingers, the note gets higher and higher, little by little. Let's listen to them all in a row. Open, first finger, third finger, and then fourth finger. Let's practice those fingers. I'm gonna give you a pattern. I'll say it, then play it, 
then I'd like you to play it. So here it is. I'm going to go one, one, three, three. Your turn. Nice job. Let's get that open D string in there as well. Try this one. Open, one, one, one. Open, one, three, three. Four, three, one, open. So we've run out of fingers. First, third, and fourth. No more fingers. So the cello is designed so that in order to get higher notes, we can move over to the next higher string. So D string is our second string. We're going to move over to the first string, which is A, and we can continue the pattern. Open, first finger, third finger, and fourth finger. So let's practice those on the A string. Let's go ahead and pluck our open A string first. The same rules apply. You have to pull your finger into the string. So let's put our first finger down on that first tape. Let's put our third finger down on the second tape with our second finger in between the first two tapes and our thumb opposite that second finger. And let's go ahead and put our fourth finger down on that third tape. Let's practice pizzicatoing some notes on the open A string. So I'll give you a pattern, I'll play it, and then you play it. One, one, three, three. Open. One, three, three. Open. One, three, four. Four, three, one, open. Join us next time where we're going to learn how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb, Pizzicato.